Yeah, yeah, so J Jay, you mentioned potential moving jobs. Corey's going to stay put at Rutgers. Congratulations. Yes. Someone not staying put at their current job is Tommy Reese, who Kevin Stefanski hand-plucked from the Alabama staff to become the new Browns tight ends coach. He's 31 years old, called plays at Alabama as their offensive coordinator. Last year, called plays in 2022 at Notre Dame under Marcus Freeman. Brian Kelly, when he left Notre Dame and went to LSU, wanted Tommy Reese to follow him to Baton Rouge, but Marcus Freeman gave him a giant raise to stay in South Bend. This guy's a rising star in the coaching ranks, just he 31 is. years old, and now he's a position coach for the Cleveland Browns. What are the overall thoughts from the panel on Cleveland plucking Tommy Reese to be their new tight ends coach? Guys, you the guys that pay attention to college football more than I do would know the answer. My first reaction was, oh, this sounds like a great hire. So yeah. I tweeted, oh, sounds like a great hire. <clears throat> right. There were a couple of people that responded to me and said, Notre Dame's offense under him stunk, and Alabama had the worst passing offense they've had in years last year. So I was like, well, I don't know. What's What do you... If he is an up-and-comer, what is that true? What does these people said to me? And if so, why do we not blame him for it? Uh, real quick, I don't think there's a single coach or fan in the country who likes their team's play caller. Point in case, Cleveland. Well, yeah, I but think, I, I mean, at Notre Dame, he was okay. I mean, they ran a pro-style offense or traditional, yeah. you know, type of offense. So, I guess that's probably why. I mean, and, and what about in Alabama this year? Alabama, they ran the spread because they had – the they have what they right. have. Yeah, they got the quarterback. Yeah. That's what they do. So, I mean, for him to come to the NFL, first of all, he gets a ton of respect in the college ranks. A lot of play, a lot of people respect him. As that is, that is true. Yeah. So that's that's a fact. Now, him becoming a tight ends coach, the thing that, so as a player, you know, because I would go through this. You know, you would look at your position coach. Typically, your position coach in the NFL is a guy that really didn't play your position, which is Facts. wow. Yeah, no. like, like for me as a black dude, it'd be like this white guy's gonna tell me how to play corner. <laughs> like, what, what are we talking about? But that's just how it is. Yeah. And the thing that that gets you to respect your coach is the knowledge that he has. The if he if he yeah. tells you some stuff, you're like, man, I never thought about it like that. And he makes you better, okay. you'll have the respect. Right. And, you know, obviously, I don't think he played tight end in his career. No, he was a quarterback. At right. I, yeah. And I was about to say, I remember, what, it's crazy I'm getting old. I remember when he was playing. But it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Was, you know, that's why yeah. we remember him. Yeah, so I think that for him, he's going to have to, the challenge is going to be, you're going to get in a room with David Njoku and maybe Harrison Bryant. You gotta get the. You gotta show these guys some things that they don't know. You know how can they elevate their game? You'll look at their tape and say, "This is some things that you can do better." And they'll look at it and be like, "Huh?" And then you show them clips of showing them how they can get better. Show them teach tape and stuff like that. And that's when guys will respect you. I think he'll do a great job. What I do think the asset that he brings is that since he's run, you know, kind of a pro style offense coming in there and being in those meetings with Kevin Stefanski as their game planning. Now you get another guy that's called plays before. Sure. So now you got another play caller in there with another play like caller. That. Now like you can that. mix your things. Maybe he might see some things or know some like things that. that Kevin Stefanski didn't look at. And so Kevin it'll make seems to do like it by right. committee. Right. So, so it will make it better. I mean, you got to replace AVP. How what better way to replace AVP with a guy who also called plays? You also still going to get another offensive coordinator in there. So I think it's just mixing in a bunch of worlds to make you know this offense better besides all of that he just played in a spread type offense Deshaun Watson likes to operate out of the spread sure. maybe he knows some things that's going to make him yeah. better in and, and he can bring some college concepts to the pros that may be right. right there like right now there's a lot of things that that they do in college football to get guys open and people in the league say you can't do that because you know hey it's college you can't, no one's going to let you get that off but there's a lot of things that trickle down from <laughs> college to the to the pros now because those guys are the top picks like they, you want to get a guy comfortable run some of the stuff that they do before mm -hmm. so I'm looking at it like this but I this I'm just reading the tea leaves it's just me I feel like they're trying to level up everywhere like you said if I can get a, a coordinator quality type coach to go to an entry level position mm -hmm. at tight end that means okay I got I'm that's an upgrade now let me see what I can do with this coordinator. And now if you get a big name coordinator, now you got a, a difference of philosophy and you got a bunch of guys mixing some of these things up to help come up with this playbook. Because to me, all these hires, all they mean is what, what, how many ingredients can we throw in here to make the best offense? It's something what creative. are you contributing to the overall yeah. big picture? Yeah. 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 And Not, I do think it's, yeah. a, it's a group effort on offense. Yeah. Because Jason has said that Stefanski has zero ego. Mm -hmm. And that lends itself well to having guys like this in the room and say, hey, coach, I've, I've got something for you. Let's, let's, let's kick the tires on this. 
On the schemes from college transferring to the NFL, Tyvis, you can speak to this. I think there are some things you can bring from mm. college to the NFL. I think most of those have already been brought over. Um, I've talked to guys about that very thing, transferring schemes and things you do in college to the NFL. What they always say is it worked in college because there were three really good a- athletes on mm-hmm. the opposing defense. <laughs> if you were playing in Alabama, and Ohio State, and Michigan, there were five. Mm-hmm. In the NFL, there's 11. Well, so that, a lot of that stuff may not transfer. That, I think what they did here, and I like this, I think this is a smart move by Haslam's or whoever pulled the trigger on this, probably Andrew Barry. He is of the – he is he fits – the bracket, the, the 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 peg of what is hot right now in, in the coaching circles in the NFL. He's a young offensive mind mm-hmm. with pedigree. Yeah. His father was an assistant coach for the Browns. Front Jim office, Donovan told a great guy. story yesterday on the 5 o'clock show with me. He said he remembers meeting Tommy Reese when he was a young boy, when his dad was an assistant with the Browns. He had him on the field. And they were very excited because the next week they were going to watch the Michigan-Notre Dame game. And Jimmy said to him, oh, you're going to see Michigan, huh? He goes, oh, no, I'm going to see Notre Dame. Now, (laughs) the young man grew up and became a quarterback at Notre Dame. So I think it's probably his lifelong goal. He achieved it. I love that about him. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that he had a big dream as a young guy, and he went out and he caught it. Um But at the end of the day, I said this yesterday, and I'll say it again about this. We just saw a a talented tight end for the Cleveland Browns, who for every year, the adjective used to describe him was potential. We just saw that tight end unlock that potential, and they fired the coach. (laughs) So what are we expecting? You know, at the end of the day, and I don't mean to minimize these positions. I don't. I know they do a lot more, but if it's... If you're going to reward a coach, you should reward a coach when one of his group has a career year. Mm-hmm. The Browns fired that coach. Yeah. So how much it's input weird. does knows? the coach really have? I don't know. I do think maybe, you know, G, you talk about bringing some things from college. I, the fact that he has been in, immersed in college football the last few years, unlike most of the coaches right. in the NFL and certainly most of the coaches on the Browns, that's a perspective of some of the younger players around the league, not just on the Browns, that he may bring to the table that some of the other coaches don't have. Good point. Kevin, how much is Kevin Stefanski paying attention to college football? Yeah. He can't. He shouldn't. Mm-hmm. And But T- Tommy Reese has been locked in on it. One other thing, too. I know he received uh, some criticism for the final play of the national championship. Uh, not the national the championship. The Ohio State. The, the, uh, no, it, the the national, no it, was, it was the Rose Bowl. Oh, the yeah, Rose okay. Bowl. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember a couple of weeks after the game, seeing they, they, they were doing like a breakdown of that play. And I, what's Alabama's quarterback's name? I Mil- Jalen Milrow. There was an Mil- RPO Mil- option, and the quarterback didn't see the guy in the flag. He didn't yeah, see it. Yeah. The, 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 there was a, he was impatient on that play. Well, it was, a so, bad, it was a bad snap, too. So And it was a bad snap yeah. that played a role, too. Yeah. But anyway, you know, and it, it, it seems like a good hire, despite some criticism. I, I mean, know. yeah, at the end it of the day. Seems like a positive. And the reason that the game is also different from college and the NFL is that in college they have – Boundary field, the hashes. Is hashes, sure. Yeah. You can throw them, them, yeah. them, them hashes. <laughs> the hashes. They, they deep the field. The, as a DV, as a safety, I'm gonna tell you right now. I used to miss that boundary. It's a lot of field in there. It's NFL. a whole <laughs> a lot, lot of field. Of field. <laughs> like, there's, there's not a ton of comparisons I could find of a guy going from the college ranks right into a position coach who is tabbed as like the next guy up. Tommy Reese could have stayed in college football and had a premier power five job either at right. Alabama well, or Well, didn't elsewhere. Kiffin do it? Kiffin did it. The most recent one was Joe Brady, who was Joe, Joe Burrow's done. passing game coordinator with Jamar Chase That's and right. Justin Jefferson. He went right from LSU, and he was just their passing game coordinator and Bill with the Tigers. O'Brien. Didn't Bill O'Brien also do it? Yeah, but that, that was passing. I mean, the most recent one okay. of notoriety was Joe Brady, who went to Carolina, became their offensive coordinator right. for two years. Then he went to Buffalo as a quarterback's coach and then got promoted to their OC job after Ken Dorsey got fired. So there is a track record of these guys having success moving from the collegiate ranks without any right. previous NFL experience to having success running an NFL offense or at least contributing to the overall well, game Overall, plan. though, I mean, I'm just judging this on pedigree because I don't know what his philosophy is. I didn't watch Alabama this year closely enough or Notre Dame last year. I just saw each of them a few times. Nothing stood out to me about their philosophy or their play calling. But to Tyvis's point, he did run offenses that suited their personnel, which mm-hmm. I like. Yep. He can morph. You know, it's not like he's getting, nope, I'm, I'm going to run spread. And that's all I'm going to run. Mm-hmm. He can run a pro-style set like he did in Notre Dame. I just like the pedigree. 
The pedigree of this hire is good. I always like it when teams draft players from Power Five you know. top schools. And he I also like when by coaches Saban. Make that by Saban has you, to say you, so, has yes, to for something. Yeah. You, you know what, Jay? Dang, man. I just that just hit me when you said that. <laughs> man, that's profound. I'm just over here like So why so why would you when you got these these coordinators, right? I would do this. I mean, I would say, okay, if I'm gonna hire a running backs coach, if I'm gonna hire a tight ends coach, yeah, any coach can coach those positions. But give me five or so assistants that have all called plays. Sure. Can you imagine the synergy with that? Because they're not just thinking about positions. They are all of them are thinking from a perspective of this is how I need to coach this guy based on the big picture of what we need to do. Couldn't that also backfire if every guy thinks he should be the decision maker? Well, it all depends, Bull. Yes, yeah, I think on it the personalities could, of the people. But I do think, and I don't know this, I haven't seen this firsthand. I've been around Kevin Stefanski just a handful of times. What what impresses me is because and this is something I picked up from Jason. Jason tells me this over and over again. The man has zero ego. I'm not and worried I about think from yeah, yeah. his perspective. Sure, no, you've no. got to have for, for it to work. The head coach has to be right. open to ideas from all these positions. But you're right. <laughs> yeah. If you do get a position coach in here who's full of himself, right. and was formerly a play caller, it might not be long before he's looking at head coach saying he's not doing and this that right. Could lead and to then problems. you could fracture. But I would. My sense is that like. Obviously, this guy's got a good pedigree, and he was a play caller at, you know, big-time university. Right. But it was still in college. Yes. He's not coming in here at whatever age he is thinking, oh, I should take Kevin Stefanski's play call. No. No. I don't think he's got that. That's not going to happen. But you know what? It also wouldn't surprise me if down the road in a handful of years that he's an offensive coordinator. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And he seems to be of the ilk where if he does a good job as a coordinator – he could be a head coach well, in this league. When I, mean, I, when I used to hire people in corporate America, I used to be, I used to say, okay, I sit in an interview and I would say, look, I want people that I think can do my job, not just the regular worker bees. Like, yes, you have to do certain things to get to that level. But if you hire people that you are already known that you're trying to promote, they're going to pay more dividends because they're going to be more punctual. They're going to be more like the thought process. Did you pick that up in a, in a management book? Because that's a brilliant theory that a lot of great managers use. Yeah, you, you got you have to be. We just go to the training classes and they say you pick the people who think that could take your job because then that means when they take your job, where are you going? Yeah, so it, it makes the whole organization better. And if yeah. I got guys that can think on a bigger picture instead of just on a micro level day to day, I think it pays. It I mean, pays also life. another another positive about it is he's 31 years old, so like he's not that far removed from the game. He right, can right still up. relate to the players. Yep. He understands the stuff that they're going through because he was just in it like mm-hmm. not too long ago. And that you you get a lot of response from players when they can talk to somebody that's like, oh, you get it, like you understand. Like it's sure. a, opposed to going to talk to Bill Belichick. It's like Bill, like you. It's been like what. 70 years since you put this helmet on. Like, you don't understand. So, I think from that that aspect, that's Belichick a really good... Belichick played in college. I can't he remember. Did. Yeah. He played at a small college. Yeah. Um, but it's... I mean, he's only 71, I think. So, it's, it hasn't been quite 70 years it's since 50. he put You know helmet. what I mean. But I get your yeah, point. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like yeah. When I was 12, someone 40 was had one foot in the grave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true. I was watching a video the other day. Somebody called somebody in their 50s uh, a senior citizen. <laughs> When do you, wait a minute, when do you way. get the discount on like 60, coffee? 65. Oh, 65 at McDonald's. Yeah. You get the discount. You, you get do the get free. some kind of discount at 50. At 50, yeah. on my birthday when I turned 50, I got an I've AARP been getting magazine. Ma- I've been like, getting, <laughs> how the hell these people snooping out? I've been getting mail from the AARP for years now. Isn't like, that crazy? Couple years. Like, what are they doing? That's 10%. <laughs> I used to sell these coupon books. <laughs> yeah. But I've never used them because I'm, never. Just, I'm just embarrassed. Never. So you like, you get up money off movies. Never. Tyvis, real quick before we talk about a different position, Coach, but – you said some of your favorite coaches in your entire career were your position coaches. Oh, yeah. How much of an impact could a position – like, Tommy Reese is a quarterback as a now tight end coach, but how much of an impact does he have and how much do, and kind of in general do position coaches have in terms of the grand picture of putting together an offensive well, I mean, they, or defensive philosophy? They, they get the best out of their players. I mean, at the end of the day, it's about building relationships. And you, like I said before, if you get a coach that teaches you things about yourself and helps you become a better player, you, you grow respect for them. Because at the end of the day, and a lot of things that people don't understand is that how you perform dictates their job. 
their job success is based off of your performance. And if you got respect for that guy, you love that guy, you'll go out there and play that hard because his family is dependent on your performance. So for me, you know, I had, I had a, obviously my way around the league. I had a handful of coaches, but some of the coaches that stood out the most to me were, you know, Brian Snyder, who was with me in Seattle. Now he's the special teams coordinator for Seattle or no San Fran. He's in San Fran now. Really good dude. Like was the one that was like typing. Listen, 53 man roster. The only way you're going to make this roster. Yeah, you you might you can might make it. But if you're not a starter, you got to be on special teams. And he was the first one as a young rookie to get me to understand how important special teams was. You know, a guy like Richard Hightower, he is now the special teams coordinator for the Chicago Bears. HT was like the one that was like, I believe in you. He said, even the people upstairs, they don't see what I see in you. See, special teams, what you don't understand about special teams is that it teaches you how to be better at your position. You know, when you're doing, when you're on KOR, kickoff return, and you're running to go get in to block somebody, guess what that is? That's middle of the field safety work. You're running and flipping your hips and backpedaling and getting ready to go in the post. So it's teaching you how to be a better football player. Uh, when I got to Seattle as a rookie, Andre Curtis, my, my cornerbacks coach, he was the one that was like, he's like, man, I ain't going to lie. I didn't think he was going to make it. But then I found out that you actually good in games. The only you perform well in games. You a gamer. Like I didn't know you was a gamer. He was like, all this time you've been in practice, not doing nothing. You get in the game and you go crazy. So that's crazy. That was yeah. And then K Rich, like my, I think K Rich and Halfley was like my two favorite deep deep B coaches. Halfley was with me in San Francisco. He was the first one that was like, type if you had a really good week of practice. So you know what I'm gonna do. I'm going to put you in the game. And I'm like, half. Come on, man. Like, listen, we grown men out here. Why would you lie like that? Why? I done heard this before. Why would you lie? He said, no, Tyrus, I'm telling you. I'm going to put you in the game. I said, okay. Did he? Sunday come around, we playing Jacksonville. About the, about the third or fourth series, I'm sitting. I just got done with special teams. I'm sitting on the sideline. He's like, Tyrus, you ready? And I'm like, oh, you were serious. Let's go. <laughs> and so, yeah, that was – it was just moments like that that, you know, I really respected all my deep, my uh, position coaches. And that's the type of stuff that you can get. They get you fired up. They get you ready to go. They the ones that's jumping around with you, celebrating with you, if they not in the box. And you just How play. much interaction did you have with the head coaches when it came to your job? <sighs> the only time you really talk to your head coaches is when you mess up. <laughs> like, really. Or if they're cutting you. So yeah, Titus, or if they cut yeah. you. Like, so like, Titus, yeah. I, I, like, like, but Kyle will talk to you. Kyle Shanahan will talk to you. But like during the game, unless you mess up, he he got – Kyle is an offensive coordinator, so he that's where his mind is sure. on. So I'm can, not going to talk to him. Can you pull up to – I'll be doing prank stuff. <laughs> 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 you know, could you walk up to the head coach and be like, what's up, dog? Yeah, but but oh, who, who you asking? Like like I want to go because like because like Pete, Pete Carroll. Carroll. Oh my, Pete, have a conference. He, what's going on? He's like <laughs> we be down. He like Tyrus, we're gonna win twenty one to twenty seven. Watch what I tell you. He take that gum, throw the gum in the, in the stands like this, pull another one out. Like Pete, what is wrong with you? Wow. Score the wrong way, twenty one twenty seven. No, like we gonna win twenty seven twenty one. You know I'm what's just crazy like to me, like Pete's a great coach. Yeah, uh, the record <laughs> speaks for itself. The one reason, I mean, I think Bill Belichick is the greatest ever to do it any level and any era. I think Nick Saban's probably better to Saban. Number two, I think Saban's number two. But one of the things that always stands out to me about Belichick, where from every, from what I can tell, he was different from every other head coach, and there's a lot of evidence to this. When and he's told this story two or three times. Leroy Horde has said, "You can go up to Bill any week of the season, any opponent, division or not, and he will tell you everything you need to know about the man that you're going to go against." It was that kind of intimate knowledge. And the other thing that tells me that he was the greatest coach ever, his assistant coaches, you would think, had a lot to do with his success. I mean, he had a lot to do with Bill Parcells' success. Mm -hmm. Bill Parcells did not have the same success without Belichick on his staff. Yeah. But when you look at the many, many, many coaches who had multiple opportunities in the NFL to show their wares that fell flat on their face once they got out of Belichick's <laughs> crib, yeah. it's astounding. His coaching tree True. is terrible. Zero. It's poison. And he might be one of the only great coaches that didn't have a no. great coaching tree. And they still keep getting chances and they suck every time. They do. <laughs> Guys have been fired twice well, or they yeah. get a third well, job. The like, quarterback is a big part. I'm about to say, like, he it's a huge like, part. Belichick's <laughs> record without Tom Brady is a losing record well, in his career. Look, now, you can make an argument that he's lost his fastball. Yes, and I think there's now. something to that. Yeah. But I still think for his body of work, 
I don't even want to argue it. I it, think he's the greatest to ever do it. It <laughs> is interesting that the Falcons, I don't want to go off track so real quick, it's interesting the Falcons have interviewed him twice and he's just not gotten the job. Well, who was it that said it? Let's face it, the Falcons aren't interviewing him. He's interviewing the Falcons. Uh, okay. Tell me about a time you've overcome an adverse situation. How about being down 28-3 to in the Super Bowl? 